Good Monday morning to you. The Monday, the day after Easter. Um, boy, what a good day we had yesterday. It was a great time with the body and service and um, I, uh, can everybody hear me? I'm not sure if everything's going on. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Uh, having a little difficulty uh, with the Wi-Fi this morning. But good morning to you. Uh, I'm tired today. It was a good long ye day yesterday and weekend leading up to Easter. But man, what a great day. I was talking to Sandy last night and we said, you know, how great the service was. And I said, you know, there's only one problem with the day like yesterday. Uh, when we have such a great time uh, together, the worship, the choir, the orchestra, all of uh, just, man, um, <laughs> the one, one problem with days like yesterday is we cannot live in those. Does that make sense? The Christian life doesn't revolve around a day or an experience. Uh, if we if we base our Christian life and our walk of the Lord on that, we're going to be sorely disappointed and just cast away. But but the Christian life is that daily time, daily communion with the Lord. And so this morning, um, when I got up, I had my first cup of coffee, and I just had to sit there and say, Okay, Lord, yesterday's gone. Uh, today is a new day. And let me not try to live on past experiences, but Lord, let me live in you today. And so that's just kind of a word today to encourage you that, uh, man, we live every day with him and we cannot go on yesterday's experience. God is is alive. If the resurrection is fact, which it is, then he's living and ruling and reigning in our hearts today. And today's a new day with him. And so uh, let's walk with him today. Uh, not really any updates to share with you this morning as far as prayer requests, except for one, Constantine uh, did go home Saturday from his treatment, and at this point there have been no side effects, and so continue to pray for that family. I was uh, thinking about a song this morning, and the reason I thought about it was because it came up on my Facebook feed where I guess about a year ago we were having Sunday morning, and we were having Sunday morning in the den of my house. What a what a difference a year makes. So, but it's uh, great, are you, Lord? I pray. 
embrace at your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only and all ears will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing We'll shout your praise, our hearts will cry, his bones will sing, great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. Great is the Lord. Amen. Uh, this morning, we're going to start wrapping up in 1 Peter, the last chapter, beginning in verse 1. And we're just going to cover five verses in this final wrap-up in the close of Peter's letter. And just so you know, day after tomorrow, we're going to start through the book of Galatians and just walk through that. That's the next letter in Scripture that I'm going to be doing in my quiet time. And so we'll pick up in the book of Galatians, and we'll just continue to walk through these letters. Um, Peter's beginning to kind of conclude one of the main things that Peter's been talking to his readers about uh, is that idea of suffering. Uh, they've gone through great persecution, uh, great suffering, unlike anything we know, uh, persecution under Rome uh, for being a Christ follower, and he uses the example of Christ that if he suffered, uh, that they're to look to him and realizing and knowing that he suffered for them, and so um, better to suffer for him for doing good than suffer for doing evil. And so he begins to write, and he exhorts a particular group, and I, it's hard to share this a little bit because I don't want to, to be self-serving, uh, but he's going to talk to the flock, uh, to the shepherds of the flock, the elders, the pastors, the overseers. Same words used in the New Testament uh, to mean uh, one person, and that's the pastor, the shepherd, the elder. And so he writes to them, so I exhort the elders among you, and uh, me, I have to take this personally. This is, this is what the Holy Spirit says to me as a, as a shepherd, as a, as a follower of Christ. Um, you know, there's no hierarchy. There's no uh, organization chart in the church like we have in the world. Uh, sometimes churches draw out that to show uh, the chain of command or whatever among staff at a church, but I kind of look at it very differently. I look at it as an upside-down pyramid uh, because I'm a follower first, or I should be a follower first. I'm, I'm not a leader. Um, that term is used today a lot, and um, but it's really it's only used a couple of times in Scripture. The idea in Scripture is that we're more of a servant, we're more of a follower. We follow Christ first, and the whole body follows Christ. Things go a lot better in a family, in an organization, in a church, if the heart and attitude is to follow Christ first. Because then there's no hierarchy, there's no lording it over, there's no, there's no idea that everything rises or falls on leadership. That's, that's a misstatement. Uh, that's just not according to Scripture. And so the idea is that, that we submit to Christ, all of us do, uh, but there are those that the Lord has called and, and called out to be shepherds and overseers, and by God's grace, Paul says, that he's called uh, to be an overseer. And I see that as, as God's grace in my life to call me to that. There's nothing special about me um, by any means that, that God would choose to do that, but God's chosen to do that, and so I'm thankful for that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do any other thing. Uh, I've done a lot of other things, but there's nothing that I would rather do uh, than what God's called me to do, and I do. So he says, so I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder. 
This is kind of interesting. Peter begins writing his letter um, as an apostle, one who walked with Christ. And now he considers himself an elder, a shepherd. And it's true that Peter was a, a shepherd, a pastor there in Jerusalem in the local church. And so he says, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as partaker in the glory that is to be revealed. And here's probably an encouraging thing that, that he, he writes to them. Uh, he witnessed the sufferings of Christ, but then he points them to the fact as well, he's going to be a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. And it reminds us that, that in this, in life, we, we, we will suffer. We'll have sufferings. And particularly to these believers, they were having very severe sufferings for being a Christ follower. But he, he points them to the, fact, to the fact that there is a glory that is going to be revealed. And we have to be reminded today that all of life's suffering, all of life's journey, uh, that, that we're, to, we're to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. There is a glory that's going to be revealed. We don't know when that's going to be. It could be today. It could be another millennium. It could be another thousand years from now. And if anybody tells you that it's going to be tomorrow, you run from them because they don't know. Even the son doesn't know when the father is going to tell him to go and get his bride. But there is coming a day when the glory of God will be revealed. And so he points them to that. And then he tells the elders, the pastors, he says, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight. Uh, this metaphor of a shepherd, it, it's not a new metaphor. Uh, it was used much in the Old Testament. And so the picture there, the metaphor is just as a shepherd shepherds the flock, giving protection, uh, giving love and care and affection for the flock. He says shepherds um, exercise that over, over the flock, not over, but among the flock that is with you, exercising oversight. And then he says this, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. Compulsion is something that uh, that we uh, that we do because there's an expectation, and he says here, don't do it out of compulsion, but do it willingly. Uh, I find it a, a battle a lot of times as as a shepherd, as a pastor, that uh, that there are certain expectations that may be there that are other than biblical expectations of the shepherd. You know, it's, it's those expectations. I expect you to look like this. I expect you to walk like this. I expect you to talk like this. I expect you to carry yourself like this. I expect you to be at this event. I expect you to be at that event. All of those kinds of things. And that there's that pressure on the, on the shepherd, on the pastor, to feel that sense. But he says, listen, don't do it out of compulsion, but do it willingly. Those things that... that um, that you've been called to do as a shepherd. Let me just put a sidebar here. Many things that are expectations placed on a shepherd or a pastor, either by the church or by those outside of the church, are not biblical expectations. They're preferential expectations. And it's a pressure not to fall to those things. Um, uh, but, but we have to be reminded, shepherds, we're not hirelings. Uh, we've been called by God to shepherd, and the primary role and call of a shepherd to a flock is to feed the sheep the Word of God. And um, that is the primary call, is to, feed. listen, I have nothing to offer, I have nothing to give, I have nothing to say that's of my own opinion. This is what matters. The book that God has inspired and given to us, as Peter writes earlier to them, feed the flock. That's what Jesus told Peter to do. Peter, feed the flock. And so it's the word of God. That's the only thing that we have really to give. But he says, shepherd the flock that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you. Uh, notice there, there's the leading there of God, as God would have you, as the Holy Spirit leads you to do that. Um, not to fall under the expectations of those that are in the flock, uh, but as God would lead. He says, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Uh, man, it, it's a sad state 
uh, the the number of shepherds that shepherd for shameful gain. It can be in a small church, it can be in a mega church, it can be in a small ministry, it can be a large ministry. But that trapping is always a temptation to be there, not to do it as God calls and God's leads, but but for a desire for selfish gain. And so we have to watch that. On the other hand, I've seen where uh, churches expect uh, pastors or shepherds to be uh, to live right on the edge of poverty, and that's not right as well. Paul commands the churches to to give double to those who are responsible to teach the word. Don't muzzle the ox while it treads out the grain. I'm thankful that I'm in a place that has a right balance in that, and the, and uh, the body here takes care of care of me and my family, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, and um, so anyway. There's not a temptation to do that here. Verse 3, he says, Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. Not domineering. Not not, uh, not being overbearers of those in the flock. Uh, but to do it in a way um, that is, uh, that's an example to the flock. Then he says in verse 4, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. So here's the encouragement to the to the elder, the pastor, the shepherd, that when Jesus appears, this is one of the about five crowns that are mentioned in Scripture, that uh, if, if we do that well, if we do that as unto the Lord, if we do it with the right heart, if we do it with the, in the right way, being examples to the flock. And by the way, can I put into parentheses there? Um, <laughs> We have clay feet, right? Uh, the desire is there. The motivation is there to follow Christ. Um, to, but we shepherds are human. Can we say amen to that? Shepherds are human. And that's not an excuse, but that's just simply to say that none of us are fully redeemed. We will be complete and redeemed and sanctified when Jesus appears. But in the meantime, we all live in this flesh that we contend with daily. And then he says in verse 5, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Uh, this would really apply across the board that there is an order that God has established in the body of Christ and the church, and there's, there's a submission to, uh, to those uh, in authority as God has placed it there. And one of the worst things or one of the worst places for a believer to be is in, in, a, is in a place of rebellion, against uh, those that God has placed over their care. He says, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. That word humility is an interesting word. It just simply means having a right view of ourselves, recognizing that we too, we all are fault. We all have fault. And to recognize that, um, that none of us are any better than the other. I call that comparative Christianity. When we get into a, a mode of comparing ourselves to others and looking around to find somebody that may be less than uh, we are, it, it, it builds us up in, in pride. Um, so he, he says that, that we are to be clothed in humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. I see somebody has hijacked our uh, our Facebook feed here and is trying to sell us something. Uh, I'll block that person so that we're not tempted to buy from solicitors on the Facebook feed. Let's pray that God would give us an opportunity today to plant a seed in somebody's heart of the gospel, that God would give us opportunity, that God would uh, make us intentional to cultivate seeds where we recognize They've been placed there. And if God would, by his graces, allow us to see somebody saved today, that God would do that. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. We will wrap up First Peter. I'll be a little more rested tomorrow, hopefully. And uh, then the day after that, that'll be Wednesday, we're going to start in the book of Galatians. Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine on you. Have a great day.